Salute, salute. Salute to God, the most high, the creator of everything. In this epico episode of Mr. Uncut Consciousness, you know, I'm going to do what a majority of the world needs to do. I'm going back to the good old days. So if you want to take a trip back to the good old days with me, join me in this episode of Mr. Uncut. Let's escape the chaos of today's world and revisit the world we grew up in that we hold dear to us, that helped shape us to be the individuals that we are from a positive standpoint. All right, y'all know what to do. Cue that theme music. Let's get into this. Salute, salute. Salute to God, the most high, the creator of everything. Salute to my all my day one. Salute to the new subscribers. You know, if you're just not coming in, you know, come in, show some Southern hospitality. Wipe your feet all over my welcome mat by hitting that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Share these videos, share the experience, share the growth, share the ministry, okay? Share the word. Trolls, you know, only God and your mama can love you. All right? Embrace that. Last but not least. Last but not least. Last but certainly not least. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all know what time it is? Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. One time. Yeah, yeah. I say one time. Yeah, yeah. I say one time. One time for the Uncut Squad. One time for the Get the Family. One time for Big Bro's Corner. Big Bro's Backup. One time for God, the real MVP, the creator, the savior, y'all. You know what I'm saying? And two salutes to the G-O-D. You know, we going in. You know, there's so much going on in today's world that I think we all are guilty of not taking time just to sit down, meditate, and just reflect. You know, reflect. They say you shouldn't bring your past into your present. And that your past has no room in your present or your future. But I beg to differ in a sense. <clears throat> you know, sometimes when you're really going through, you're really under stress, you're really under pressure, you are really at your breaking point. Sometimes it's good just to get away, you know, and reflect on how things were when you were growing up. You know, or reflect on how things, how good things were when you were at your peak of success. That's enough to use for motivation. That is drive. Meaning, if you can reflect on those times, then in your mind, you're going to convince yourself that you can do even better than you did then. And then you know what happens? God starts to move in you and God shows you that the impossible is possible and that you can do better than what you were doing then. So if you think that this was something in your life, then God is saying, wait till I put you here. It's immeasurable. All right. So I like to sit and reflect. You know, I make a lot of videos on exposing churches and prosperity preachers and, you know, men who success, men of God who successfully, men of God who successfully hustles in the temple. All right. That's why you'll hear me say MOG shit. It's not me cursing, it's just me using it as an acronym. Men of God successfully hustling in the temple. M-O-G shit. Okay, now here we go. <clears throat> when I was growing up, we had what you really call church. We had what you really call revivals. We had what you really call God's spirit moving. We had what you really call dedication. You know? I mean, think about it. I'm an old head. And I'm proud of that, you know. And if you're younger than me, your job is to make it to my age or better. All right? You've got to live that long. If I live this long, then you've got to live as long as I have. That is your number one job. Keep yourself safe. Stay away from anything that doesn't, that doesn't benefit you. Okay? Now, you know, we get up and we go to our church. We call, it was called Bell's Temple. You know, and we would get up and mama, 
get everybody, make sure everybody's ready. You know, she'll stop by the store, y'all. And it was always either Speedy's, and we had a store in Palmetto called Pat Groover's. Palmetto's also known as Memphis, Florida, okay? And we would stop by either Pat Groover's Market, which was like directly almost across the street, cat corner from the church, you know? We would go in there, we would break, you know, different types of bills, I ain't gonna lie. We had them old school food stamps too. Used to love spending them food stamps. Mom used to hand us the book of ones or the book of fives. Hey, this is what y'all go get it. Oh yeah, we love that, you know. But what I'm getting at is this. Once we entered that building, all the playing stopped. We were young and we could understand how God moved and we could understand the spirit moving because we saw it. It was something real. It wasn't something rehearsed. It wasn't something people were doing for show, for clout, for money, for clicks, for views. Matter of fact, while we're on this, there was no internet. There was no internet. The first cell phone came out. It was a Nokia, one of the big, one of the big, ooh, excuse me. <laughs> I almost went there. One of the big old phones that had the real big antenna. Okay, it had a very big antenna. All right, it was a Nokia cell phone. <laughs> Y'all excuse me, I got caught up reminiscing, you know. The devil is busy. All right, oh, my side is hurt. My back has been out. I'm under the weather, y'all. I'm going to go forward with this. All right, so there was no internet. There was nothing. So everything was real. Everything was authentic. You know, the pastor would get up here and the pastor do his little dance. And the pastor would sing. And the pastor would pray. And the pastor would preach. Oh, my Lord this pastor would preach. You know, I wasn't sure some of the things he was saying when I was a little kid because I didn't know the Bible like that, but I just knew what he said sounded good, and I see mama jumping up, shouting, so I'm gonna jump up and shout too because what he said sounded pretty good even though I don't understand the significance of it all. All right, now, I'm talking about church. I'm talking about sweating to, a, to the point where even a pastor <clears throat> is taking off his blazer. Even a pastor is loosening his tie and taking it off. Sweating in here praising God, sweating. You got people falling out, not because they was pushed down by someone who mumbled something in a false tongue and called it a tongue, okay? But because the spirit was upon them, we had people falling out left and right, left and right. Pastor didn't have to touch them. All they had to do was put them hands up a couple of times and holler, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, and let that spirit touch them. Next thing you know, you better have an usher standing behind them because they're going to pass out. They're going to pass out. The spirit was moving, y'all. That was church. That was church. When you didn't care how long church lasted because you're having fun. It wasn't entertainment. It was growth. It was actually biblical learning at its finest. At its finest. It's seeing God's spirit move through so many different people at once because they, they are adhering to his call. And the Bible say when prayers go up, blessings come down. When prayers go up, blessings come down. God says he inherits the praises of his people. And this was real praise, y'all. Listen, man, you had people in the church swear like they had been out work, working in the fields, doing roofing work. No, this is Sunday. <clears throat> we keeping it holy. We up in here. We praising God. We shouting. We jumping. We dancing. You got people speaking in tongues. You know what? This person just caught the spirit. So pastor going to hold off on his, his message right now. And pastor going to tell that drummer and that band and that chorus to keep doing what they doing. So that the spirit can continue to move through this person. To move throughout the church. It was infectious, y'all. It was infectious. <coughs> you fast forward to today. And now it's all about having that mega church. It's all about being that popular celebrity figure type preacher. It's all about how much money you can collect. It's all about the hustle. All about the hustle. It's all about the show. Let me pull out my phone and record this. I'm going to get some views and some followers. Somebody might send me a check for this if I get enough views. If I get enough clicks, if I get enough followers, if I get enough likes. This is what I mean when I say praising God then was authentic. Now it's entertainment. It's entertainment. And I'm not saying personally because I get my one-on-one. -on -one, okay? I get my one-on-one. -on -one. But a lot of these churches is sheer 
entertainment. Entertainment. You know, they want to put on the best show, the best concert, the best entertainment that they can to assure them a great collections plate at the end. At the end. These pastors nowadays will preach to you and go home and forgot what they preached on and they're doing the same thing that they preached against. Yes. Yes. Back then it was hard to find a pastor who had been to prison. Most of your pastors now have been to prison. And everybody knows when you go to jail, you get holy. Take it from somebody who's been there. Take it from somebody who's been there. If they were doing background checks before they gave someone a minister's license, you wouldn't have as many hustlers in the church and in the pulpit as you have now. Oh, I just said something real. I just said something real. See, this is a game. This is a game. You can walk in, hand somebody a million dollar check, put whisper of fake tongue and, and, and put your hand on them. And now anybody can put you in the spirit. Anybody? God didn't touch you. That check touched you. That money touched you. It's just not the same. It's not the same. See, back then, in the good old days, when you suffer a national disaster like where I live here in Florida, we have lots of hurricanes during hurricane season. And I told y'all I'm an old head. I can name a lot of these hurricanes. Okay? I can name a lot of these hurricanes. But the first people who came out after these hurricanes, believe it or not, was not FEMA. It was not law enforcement. It was not firefighters. I'm going to be honest. It wasn't even our neighbors. Unless you were related to the person living next to you or close friends with someone living next to you, it wasn't even your neighbors. You know who's the first one to knock on your door wearing all matching shirts from the church and, and white pants or white dresses and white skirts or whatnot. You know who it was? On Saturdays, on Fridays, on Sundays, Monday, too. It don't matter. Whenever the hurricane took place, I'm talking about out here in flooded water in the streets. Out here in the flooded water in the streets in their finest. And they're not worried about getting it dirty. What they're worried about is I need to make it to this door to see if Brother Johnson is okay. I need to make it to this door to see if Sister Margaret is okay. I need to make it to this door to see if Brother Tommy is okay. I need to make it right here regardless of this water, regardless of what I'm wearing, to make sure that Sister Sheena is okay. And they were out there, y'all. They were out there. Nowadays, fast forward, the pastors are in there. They're in the building. They're not coming to you. You and Derner have to make an appointment to go to them. And they're going to charge you. See, back then, pastors fought hard to keep marriages together. To keep marriages together. They understood no one was perfect and things are going to happen. You're talking about spending the rest of your life together. You're going to go through some things. It's not what you go through. It's how you come out of it. But if God ain't in it, you can't win it. All right. If God ain't in it, you can't win it. So these pastors would do everything, you know, for free to make sure that a marriage had longevity, to set an example to the children in single parent homes that when you grow up, you can find you a husband, you can find you a wife, and we could break a generational curse of raising children as single parents. Fast forward to today. Oh, because they have so many doctorates or PhDs or bachelors or whatever, you know, oh, well, I'm certified to do this. I'm certified to do that. I'm going to charge this. I'm going to charge that. Well, is this God's work or your work? Because I don't remember Jesus charging. When he healed the young lady of her, 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 her bleeding issue at the well, he didn't charge her. Peter was sinking when he took his eyes off God. God didn't charge him when he saved him. He brought Lazarus back to life. He didn't ask Lazarus for anything. Anything. See, the world hates real. We've been neutralized, sterilized, and distracted with a fake doctrine, y'all. That's the only way I can put it. That's the only way I can put it. Not all but some. There are great pastors out there. Me personally, I love Pastor Philip Anthony Mitchell. I love, you know, Tony Evans. I, I love pastors like Ray Hagans. You know, so I have my select few that I would listen to. Listen to. But the key word was select few. 
which means that we have to be selective where we choose to praise and demonstrate for God. The same way you would do a background check on someone you was hiring, it's the same way you need to do a background check on that house of worship you plan on attending. You plan on blessing financially. These are just financial institutions nowadays. Back then it was church because them pastors didn't care if you put a penny in the plate. They didn't care if you gave at all because they understood that God was their provider. They understood that God, the Lord, was their shepherd. The, the, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. These pastors knew this and they demonstrated it to the congregation. This was faith building. You don't get that now. Now they want you to think the more you give, the more God is going to bless you. No, no, no. The more you give, the more you're blessing that man that's bringing you the message so that he can keep driving that clean Mercedes Benz or that BMW so that he can continue to buy property, pay off debts and loans for his family while you take away from yours. See, God blessed you with the job. God blessed you with structure. He blessed you with a way to get by financially. I don't care if you have to dictate when you're going to pay a bill out of this paycheck, that paycheck, this paycheck. God made a way. But when you start to give, 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 and give to people who are using your belief and your faith system against you, then you find yourself trying to climb out the hole. Ask yourself, are they climbing out the hole? They weren't even climbing out the hole when before you chose to visit their church. They were still all right. Nine times of ten, they were all right before they even opened that church. They had to get alone. These are things you need to think about. So I like to escape the worryation and the fakeness of today. And sometimes sit down in my mind and go back to the good old days. And it reminds me of how good God really is. And it reminds me of the changes God has really made in my life. And I hope today's video reminds you that God is the same God of yesterday, today, and forever. With that being said, get your one-on-one. -on -one. Get your one-on-one. -on -one. Get your one-on-one -on -one with your higher power. All right, it's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're God's children. Talk to your father. Talk to your father. Y'all stay prayed up, stay blessed up, stay meditated up, stay protected. Stay real, stay woke, stay uncut. Be inspired, be great, be you. I'll shake.